Okay, second fight in the cards of bantamweight bout between Gustavo Lopez and Haile Alatang. Alatang's a 29-year-old Chinese fighter, 14-8-1 overall. He's 4-1 in his last five fights, 5-5 five five in height with a 67-inch reach. The current money line has him at minus 130, Lopez at plus 110. Lopez is 32 years old. The American fighter is 12-6 overall, 3-2 in his last five fights. Five foot five in height and also with a 67 inch reach. So height and reach wise identical. Records are similar. The money line reflects how I feel about this fight. It's it's tough. I, I went back and forth. I'm on Lopez to win the fight, but there's a lot of similarities here. And some of them are not good similarities, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Striking numbers. Lopez is landing 2.24 strikes per minute compared to 2.87 for Alatang. Alatang is absorbing 5.82 strikes per minute, and Lopez is absorbing 4.65 strikes per minute. In terms of the takedown offense, uh, Lopez is averaging just about one takedown per three-round fight, whereas Alatang is getting 2.33 takedowns per 15 minutes or per three-round fight. Alatang's got great takedown defense, defending 100% of the takedowns against him, whereas Lopez is defending only 27% of the takedowns against him. As for tapology, Alatang is the big favorite. 71% of the votes coming in here are for Alatang to win the fight. And initially, I was on him to win the fight, too. I heard some cappers talking about it before I even did my full breakdown, and so I was a little jaded, you know. Then you start watching the film, and it just, there's glaring issues with both fighters. Um, let's point out here, let's look at Gustavo Lopez first. Okay, He's coming off a loss to Andre, Andre Adrian Yanez. Okay? Not a bad loss by any means. By any means. Uh, Adrian Yanez is a guy who's going to be competing for a title soon at some point. Very gifted, great striker. Round three knockout. And uh, look, Lopez joins a lot of other guys who've been starched by Yanez. So that's not an issue. He just got beat by a really good fighter. It is what it is. It probably would happen five times out of five against someone like Yanez going against a guy like Lopez. There's Lopez down here. There's Yanez up here in terms of levels. Now, prior fight, this is where I watched this fight after watching Yanez fight. And now I watch Lopez go out there against Anthony Burchak and just be a different fighter altogether. He gets a round two, rear, I'm sorry, round one rear naked choke halfway through the round. Looks different. Body language is different. Attitude is different. I know what you're probably saying. Well, it wasn't as good. As, it wasn't as good of an opponent. I get that, but it was like everything about his approach was different. It was like when he walked in there against Adrian Yanez, he was in survival mode from the minute he walked in, backing away, didn't want to engage in anything, wasn't really even trying to take him down. Just was scared. Was scared. He knew Yanez was a good fighter. He couldn't mentally just deal with it. I guess so. It wasn't like it was a different fighter. That's my point. So it gets Anthony Burchek. He looks good. Gustavo Lopez gets the back position. You know, grinds him out in the ground, starts punching him, slips in the hooks, gets the rear naked choke. It's beautiful. Looks great. Fight before that, he fights Marab Devash Vili. Devash Vili is a good fighter. He's a decision machine. He always wins by decision, and he ends up beating Lopez here by decision. But it's how it looks. It's, again, Gustavo Lopez doesn't look like he did against Anthony Burchek. It's like he accepts the fact that I'm probably going to lose this fight against Marab. He's a better fighter than me. I need to be cautious. I'm not going to win the fight. I just want to get out of here. Survival mode, survival mode, survival mode. He loses my fight by my decision. So when you look at him against guys like Jose Alde or guys against like Vincent Marquez or against Joey Roquette, it's a different fighter. <laughs> okay, for some reason, Lopez goes into those fights against those cans or lower level fighters, and he's like, I could do it. I believe in myself. When he steps in against a better opponent like Adrian Yanez and Marab Vashvili, the game plan's different. He looks different. His striking doesn't look good. He, he's just backing up more. He's very hesitant. So, you know, that's what I see from Gustavo Lopez. And if you're not sure, you can confuse that with just bad fighting. I think it's just little nerves. I think he's a little bit too cautious, a little overly cautious, if you know what I'm saying. All right, let's talk here about. Our Asian friend here, Haile Alatang. So Alatang, look, he's got all that thing that the Asian fighters got where, you know, he's he's young. Well, no, I'm sorry, not very young, but he's got these fights in the, in the Far East. Some of them, it's like, did they happen? Did they not happen? Who were the opponents? Was the What was the level of competition? Just a lot of questions about who he's been fighting. And then when you watch him fight, when you watch him fight, oh, there's even more questions. Let's talk about his fight against Casey Kinney. I like Casey Kinney. He's a good fighter, right? But Casey Kenny goes out there and looks like Conor McGregor in his peak when he's fighting against Alatang. He's kicking the hell out of him. He's chewing him up. He's landing whatever he wants to land. And Casey Kenny's a good fighter, okay? But he's like an above average UFC fighter. He went out there against Alatang and he looked like the world beater of all world beaters. And Alatang's out there like just getting tagged, can't counter fast enough, just cannot even anywhere keep up with Casey Kenny. So keep that in mind when we're thinking about where Alatang is at. He's not going to make any moves towards any title shots. He's that first generation of Asian fighters who are trying to get up into the UFC and, you know, get some marketing going, get some fans going. But this guy's not going to contend for a title at any point. I'm sorry to say that, but I just I just don't see it. Now, so against Casey Kinney, he looks like just shit for three rounds of just shit. Casey does whatever he wants to do for three rounds. Against Ryan Benoit, 
Okay, here's interesting. Ryan Bonet goes all the way over there for when Korean Zombie fought 2019. He goes all the way over to Korea. The American fighter goes to fight against Haley Alatang. They go to a split decision. Okay, Ryan Benoit is 10 and 8, y'all. Ryan Benoit has lost four straight fights. He's lost seven of 10 fights. The dude is on a terrible streak. He's not a quality fighter. And when you watch this fight, he looks good. He looks good. He, does a, he lands a Superman punch in round one. He lands a, he lands a, he lands a body kick in round one that looks like it's about to fold over Alatang. And you're watching the fight round one, you're thinking, damn, Benoit's going to get the win. And he does win round one. Every judge had Benoit winning round one on their scorecards. But then he proceeds to go on and just not win round two and gets wrestled down and it gets a little bit hairy and he loses by split decision. I think it was a fair decision. I mean, it was in Korea for Christ's sake. You can't not give a close decision to the, to the far Eastern fighter. Right. Um, but my point in that fight is Ryan Benoit is not, you know, again, the guy has lost four fights in a row, seven of 10 fights. He's not, you know, he's, he's barely hanging on here to whatever's left of his UFC career. And he's a 10 and eight overall. But when he fights against Haile Alatang, you could watch the fight. The link is in the description. It's a close fight. It's a close fight. So, you know, what does that tell me about Latang? It tells me he's very, very, very average. He's a very, very average fighter. It tells me he's a lot like Gustavo Lopez. You know, I think Lopez may have a slight, uh, let's say, advantage in fighter experience. Because Lopez, when you look at his recent fight history, he has fought Yanez. He has fought Marab Deveshalili. He has fought Jose Alde. He has fought Burchak. He's fought at least some guys. You know, some guys, Andre Uhl, he lost to him, Chris Dempsey. So he's got some guys in his fight history that are decent. When you're looking at Haile Tang, he's fought Benoit. He did beat Dana Bacaral, which is, like, weird because people like Bacaral, but he's up and down, and he's only 9-2. and two, So that doesn't overstate it. The point is, look, I'm looking at this fight. It's dead even. It's pretty much dead even. They both, for lack of a better word, they both have moments where they kind of stink. <laughs> They both have moments where they just fight differently and they don't do the right things. I'm I'm thinking that Lopez at plus 110, a little more value here as a slight dog. Um, maybe he could scoop up a submission position. The one thing I don't like about submitting this particular fighter here is Alatang is very thick and wrestler built. Doesn't seem like he's got a lot of neck to choke. Um, thick arms, thick limbs, kind of shorter to the ground. So I, I see it being a very ugly three-round decision fight. It makes sense that it's early in the prelims because these, these guys are lower level. They just fight very lower level. So I'm giving the edge here to Lopez. I think his experience, um, I think he's got a little bit harder of a fight history behind him. He's fought some better guys. I'm hoping he takes the experience from Yanez and Marab Deveshvili and is able to do enough here to get himself in position. A little wrestling, a little back control, a little backpacking. The fight's here in the United States. If this fight was out far east, I would definitely favor a split decision here, win for Haile Alatang. But... Yeah, guys, I, I hate to tell you that I don't really have a pick, but I just don't really have a pick here. I'm on Lopez to win. I'm not touching this fight with a 10-foot pole. Not true, actually. I will put it into one of those big parlays to do, you know, the big parlay thing where we're choosing all the winners and losers for every fight. But that's about it. I just don't have no confidence here in either fighter. And like I said, I'm going to be looking to see who's going to lose, not who's going to win, because I feel like one of these two guys is going to find a way to pretty much lose the fight. You know, there's the breakdown, guys.